Church, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I was so glad that you're here with us today. Comment down below the favorite thing that you've eaten this week. All right, I just want to share a quick verse with you. Psalm 103 verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Church, this week we need to keep reminded of all the great things God has been doing for us this week. I'll just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for how amazing you are. And I just pray that you bless each and every one of us today and everyone who sees this video. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, why don't we get ready to praise and worship God.
decided it's time to get into shape. You might have been purchasing some, you know, dumbbells or hand weights or whatever. Maybe some of you have even ordered a treadmill and been running um, in your living room. One thing I've always found really weird about treadmills and kind of annoying about treadmills is you run for so long and you get really tired and you get really worn out and you start sweating, but you're not actually moving anywhere. It's like you're putting in all this effort, but you're not actually getting anywhere. And I always found that kind of frustrating whenever I've used a treadmill before. And you know, there was a time actually in my life where it felt like I was spending all my time on a hypothetical treadmill. I was putting in all this effort to try and reach this level of perfection, to try to reach happiness, to try to fill my life with things that would give me fulfillment and give me meaning and it's like I was running after these things like wanting lots of friends and seeking after popularity wanting to look a certain way and restricting my diet so that I would look a certain size um, you know on social media trying to get fulfillment from that somehow and it's like I was chasing after all these things but they always just left me feeling tired without actually getting anywhere kind of like I was on this never-ending treadmill that I just couldn't get off. And I remember there was this one time I was at a um, camp for my church and I don't exactly remember what the speaker was talking about, but I remember as they were speaking, they were talking about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And as she was speaking about what Jesus did, this word accepted kept coming into my mind and it's like this relief started coming over me and it's like I was starting to turn the dial down on the treadmill and it was getting slower and slower and slower and I was feeling more and more relieved coming to a realization that I actually was accepted in Christ and you know one of my favorite verses is in Romans 5 verse 8 which says and God demonstrated his love for us that while we were still sinners Christ died for us. You might be wondering, what is sin? You've probably heard it mentioned a few times before. Basically, sin is the things that we do wrong, and that actually separates us from a relationship with God. And in order to um, open up that passageway so we could get to God and have a relationship with God, a sacrifice needed to be made, and Jesus did that for us. He came onto this earth as a baby, lived the life as a human, like all of us, with temptations, with struggles, with grief, with sorrow, he, he faced it all, but he remained perfect and he didn't do anything wrong. He remained sinless. And he actually sacrificed himself on a cross and died a death that I should have died, that we should have died because we did the wrong thing. And then he rose again, bridging that gap that was made by sin so that we could actually be one with God again and he did that before we even accepted him he did that before we even said we loved him and that's the thing that really stood out to me when I had this realization of acceptance God actually loves me and he loves you despite what you do despite what you look like despite how many friends you have despite any of that your popularity your job he actually just loves us as we are and you know all you need to do like what I did those years ago 
is ask Jesus to come into your life and to be the Lord of your life, which means he, we follow him in how we live. And we can do that through just a simple prayer. And whenever we pray that prayer, he always says yes. He never rejects us. He always accepts us. Like that word that I had repeating in my head of accepted, he accepts you too. So if you're sitting here and maybe your heart's beating a little bit or this has really stood out to you, or you feel like you've also been like running on a treadmill, getting tired but not getting anywhere, I encourage you to pray this prayer with me right now. It's really easy. You can repeat after me in your lounge room or in your bedroom or you can just pray it in your head or in your heart as I, as I pray. But I really encourage you guys to listen to these words and to, and to pray them if you feel like it's, it's time for you. All right, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much that you love me, that you have accepted me and for what Jesus did on the cross. I'm sorry for the things that I do wrong and for the sins that I've committed, God. But I thank you that when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he broke the power of sin over my life so that I could be restored back to relationship with you, God. So I ask that you would become the Lord of my life. I invite you into my life and I want to live the rest of my life following your ways and learning to become more like you. Thank you that I'm accepted and loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, if you've prayed that prayer, congratulations. That is literally the best decision you could ever make. It's the best decision I've ever made, so you won't regret it at all. Um, if you want to go to the comments, we'll have a link up there where you can... Um, fill out a connect card and we just want to be able to, when you do that we want to be able to put some resources in your hand to help you on this journey and to encourage you in this decision that you've made so well done and um we're so excited to have you part of god's family thanks guys this past week eight month old ellis caleb palioto firstborn child of crystal and ellie was dedicated to god by Pastor Craig. It was a lovely COVID safe service and we are so excited to see what God does through his life as he grows. Hey family, I wanted to tell you about how to give to our Heart Freeze House offering. There are two ways that you can give. One way is that you can give through our Tithely app. It's safe and secure, perfectly safe. You can give via your credit card or Visa debit card details. When you go to the Tithely app, you just go to the drop down screen that says land slash buildings and you can give one off or you can give recurringly. The other way that you can give is by EFT, Electronic Funds Transfer, to the church's general account and the details are right there on the screen. But it's really important you put the reference H4HH, Heart for His House. Uh, and then we'll know exactly where that money needs to go. Thank you so much for giving for the future of our church. Hey church, so our next in college course is coming up soon. It's called Angelology. Uh, for details, uh, look for the comments down below on how to register. Also, Carol's is coming up soon. We're so excited for it. It's going to be online this year on the 12th of December. There's heaps of things happening behind the scenes right now. So keep an eye out for details to come. Also, we just wanted to let you know that our effective stress and suicide prevention webinars are now available on demand. So check out our website on how to access them. We're now going to hear a short word from Pastor Chris. Hey guys, today's working word is from Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. And you might say, Pastor Chris, we don't have any walls around our city to even break. What are you talking about? Well, let me show you what it looked like in the Old Testament times. Can you see this army down here? They're getting surrounding the city. This city has huge ginormous walls, which is protecting them from this enemy. This is what broken down walls look like. 
This city has every opportunity to be uh, attacked by this enemy now. Even though the houses are still standing here, the walls around the city are all broken down. That's exactly what can happen to us. Not so much in our city, but in our head and in our heart. If a bully says to us, you're not good enough. If mum or dad, you know, they're yelling at you because you're not getting ready fast enough and they say, you're so lazy. And you go, oh, I am. That's like an attack of the enemy. And you know that we, can ha we have the power to stop those thoughts from progressing from our ear into our head. But sometimes we need self-control. And if we don't have self-control, that can be the difference between when a thought goes from here to in here or into here, which is even worse. So let me show you what self-control looks like. Let me show you with this little guy. If uh, your teacher says, you know what, you're terrible at school. You're never going to do anything in life. And you sit there and go, oh, Heavenly Father, I just don't know what to do. But I know that I'm not what they say I am. I know that I am who you say I am. Lord, help me to be a good student. You have the ability to look after your, look, I'm smashing, there's nothing happening. I can't smash this egg because I have control. It has control. What happens if you have one with no self-control? Same situation, the teacher's being mean and you go, oh, I'm so angry. Oh, that's what self-control does not look like. Okay, self-control is messy. Self-control messes with your head and it messes with your heart because you don't have the ability to stop and think about what you're doing and pray and work through things and think about it calmly and ask God to speak to you. So remember, self-control is very important. Your kindness and grace
Church. I'm so glad you've joined us this evening. What a great time we've had so far worshipping together. Wow, what a great week it's been this last week. We're coming out of lockdown um, bit by bit. And I know some of you have just enjoyed um, the visits that you've been able to have and going out for coffee and all those things. It's really good. I'm just going to pray and we're going to get into the word tonight for a few minutes. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would open our hearts to your word. Speak to us right now. Whatever it is that you want to do, Lord, we give you permission and we submit to your authority. Thank you for these next few minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if you uh, were well, hopefully at church on Sunday where Pastor Craig brought an amazing message around margin. And I know, you know, we did a big series, I think, late last year or earlier this year on margin. And it was really the feedback we got was life changing uh, for so many people. And Craig really felt that we needed to go there again and really deliberately because as we're coming out of lockdown, the temptation to lose any margin that we might have gained through lockdown is there and it's big. So he spoke on Sunday about margin and if you miss the message, you can go back and listen to it and it's really worthwhile. So I'm actually just going to come around that topic again, but sort of get a little bit specific about one area. You know, one of um, the the verses that just keeps coming up again and again is Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for it will affect everything you do. And that verse is is just such a good uh, verse to meditate on and just think about how we're guarding our heart because out of our heart um, comes our thoughts, comes our actions, comes so many parts of our life. Do you know, I wonder if you could give me a definition of margin um, it's, it's worth thinking about. Craig said the defini de definition of margin was this. It's the difference between what you have and what you need. So, for example, he said, if you had margin in your schedule, it means that you would show up for something five or ten minutes early so that you weren't sort of rushing right to that last second. If you had margin financially, it means that at the end of the month, you had a little bit of money left over. That might seem really tough for some of us. But one thing that Craig said that really jumped out at me, and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight, was that having margin could mean that we have emotional capacity to deal with problems when they arise. Emotional capacity or emotional margin. What I mean by this is... You're going about your day and suddenly you're faced with a, a big frustration or suddenly you're faced with a conflict. You know, you, your day might be going really well and, and your spouse suddenly says something that just makes you so mad. Or maybe your kids uh, disobey you or talk back to you. Or maybe your boss uh, suddenly criticizes you. You're going one way, feeling good, and then suddenly you're hit with a conflict. And emotional margin will show up at that moment. The emotional margin will show up just at that moment. You know, most of us uh, deal with conflict at least once a week. Some of us deal with conflict every single day of our lives, depending on our relationships. It's not something that can be avoided. It's going to happen. Conflict is going to come in whatever circumstance. And it's really important that we consider our emotional capacity or what emotional margin we have to face conflict when it comes. Do you know, as you know, we I live in a house of girls, beautiful six daughters, and most of us have long hair. So therefore, one of the items that is prevalent in our house is a hair elastic. And if you know anything about hair elastics, they stretch a lot. And as you're wrapping it around that ponytail and you, you just go that little bit too far, they will snap. And when they snap, they hurt. They flick you in the back of the head. <laughs> And this is a little bit what it's like for emotional margin. If we're stretched to the limit emotionally, it's like when we're hit with a conflict, we'll snap and we'll certainly hurt ourselves and we'll certainly hurt other people. You know, if my emotions are too far stretched, then in the moment, I, I don't cope. I don't, I, I do things that I regret, will regret later. And, and I hurt people that I would have not wished on upon them. Some of the things that take away our emotional margin can be simple. It could be we're just really tired. We just haven't had enough rest and we've been working way too hard. But sometimes it's other things. It, it might be stress in our life, stressful situations, and that can sap our emotional margin. 
Sometimes it's poor self-care. We're just not looking after ourselves well. well. But other times it's, it's deeper things like unforgiveness. If I'm holding unforgiveness towards someone, then my emotional margin is, is not going to be there. Or maybe it's um, some bad habits that we've developed over time. We've sort of hardened our heart to a particular relationship so that when a conflict arises, our walls go up and we sort of go back to our default position of aggression. Do you know, we can all feel weak emotionally. But as Christians, we have access to God's mighty power. And as Christians, we have the resources of heaven to help us gain back that emotional margin. The thing is, we're all human and we're all in a battle. We're battling the world. We're battling those things around us. But we're also battling our own sin, our flesh, our sinful nature. And then we're also battling the enemy. We have an enemy and he's out to, to mess with our lives. So these three things are, are all part of the battle. And often if our elastic is about to stretch too far and snap, it's because we've had old wounds that have been sitting there for too long and, and we haven't allowed God to heal those wounds. Psalm 147 verse 3 says this, He, meaning God, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. If we allow him to heal up our wounds, then our emotional capacity is going to increase. You see, conflict will come. But if I let the Holy Spirit heal my wounds, if I let the Holy Spirit be my strength, then I'm going to face those conflicts well. And when I prepare ahead of time and deal with these things, then I won't snap when, when it comes. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says this, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. We can feel quite weak emotionally sometimes, but but our strength comes from him. It comes from the Holy Spirit. I want to, in the next few minutes, just talk about three ways that you can work on or increase your emotional margin or your emotional capacity. So you can be just doing some good self-care so that when those conflicts come, and maybe you had some today, maybe you'll have some tomorrow, but you're a little more prepared and that you can face them better. The first one is actually quite simple, but it's something as Christians we forget to do so often. And this is an exercise that you should be doing every single day. And, and actually, it's a good thing to do every single morning when you wake up. And that is remind yourself who you are every day. Remind yourself who you are. So often we live in defeat because we continue to believe the lies of the enemy. We continue to believe the lies that we're, we're full of shame. We're not good enough. We're not worthy. We're, we're just going to fall back into old habits. Christian, don't entertain what you are not. You are saved by the blood of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are redeemed. You have access to every heavenly blessing. You ha have, have resources beyond your mind. And you have Jesus living in you to help you in any situation. Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Every day we need to train our brains to declare who we are in him. And then we will start to transform our minds so we don't believe those lies. And we need to be diligent. This is what we said earlier about guarding our hearts against the lies of the enemy. When a stress comes, we bring it to the Lord and we bounce it off his truth about who we are. And we ask him to heal any wounds that might be sitting there, any wrong thinking that we believe for a long time. So every day, remind yourself multiple times a day if you need to who you are, and that will help your emotional capacity. The second, th the second strategy I want to give you today to help boost your emotional margin or your emotional capacity to face conflict is you need to have a strategy for conflict. What do I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. You know, you might think that's really weird. Why would I prepare a strategy for conflict? Wouldn't I just want to avoid conflict? Like just, just back off from it. Actually, that's really unrealistic. We live in this world, as I've said, and conflict's going to come. I've got a bit of a personal testimony here. You know, my personality type, I'm, I'm phlegmatic. I, I literally hate conflict. 
I know some people don't hate conflict. They're like ready for it. Well, I literally, it scares me, always has done. And many years ago, I got a little bit, you know, justifying in this. And I'd be like, uh, you know, Matthew, um, Sermon on the Mount. And, and Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And I was like, yeah, that's what I am. I'm a, pe I'm a peacemaker. But one day I was in a, a study with an older woman at Sydney Church. She's going to be with the Lord now. And she was talking about how the Lord had convicted her about this. That being a peacemaker doesn't mean you're a conflict avoider. And that's what I thought I was. But being a peacemaker means that I will tackle the conflict with God's grace and God's mercy. So if you're a conflict avoider, it's time to stop doing that. It's not helpful. It doesn't build you up. It doesn't build other people up. Conflicts have to be faced, but we can face them with good emotional margin. Do you know in my marriage with Craig, we actually have a strategy for conflict between the two of us. And we've talked about this at times when we weren't angry at each other. And if you've been married long enough, you know that conflict comes. Do you know, we, we've, we know that sometimes when we have a tension build between us, that we can sometimes make the choice that we won't talk about this now. We'll leave it for a more opportune time. We've always um, made the decision that even if we're angry at each other, we won't disrespect each other. We won't call each other names. We won't get nasty. We'll try and keep the main thing the main thing. We haven't always been perfect at it, but having that strategy has certainly helped us fight well and come out of those conflicts. You know, if I'm angry at Craig, I'll still make him a cup of coffee in the morning like we usually do for, and he for me, like we usually do in the morning. We'll still kiss each other goodnight. It's just a strategy of things we will and won't do when it comes to conflict. I won't, I'll watch my tongue, I'll watch what I say in a conflict. Psalm 37 verse 8 says, so turn from anger, don't rage. We do get angry sometimes, but we don't have to stay there and we don't have to rage and let it get the better of us. Now, just because I have a strategy for conflict doesn't mean the other person has a strategy for conflict. You might say, well, you don't know what I'm up against. You don't know how mean they get and how strong they get. Do you know, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about you. We're talking about me. We're talking about having emotional margin to deal with the conflict. So whatever the other person throws at you, you're going to be drawing your strength from the Holy Spirit. And you're going to allow him to convict you of where you may have gone wrong. And he's going to give you strength and guidance to speak or not speak appropriately and not be taken out by the conflict. Proverbs 19.11, the voice translation says, A person with discretion is not easily angered. He gains respect by overlooking an offence. When we're drawing on the Holy Spirit, then we might overlook some things that probably didn't need to be pointed out. Imagine facing a conflict with discretion. That just takes the fire out of, it, out of it right there. Do you know one of the fruits of the spirit that we teach our kids and we memorize, but sometimes we're not so great at it, is self-control. Fruit of the spirit is self-control. And a person without emotional margin shows no self-control. But someone with emotional margin has that self-control to, to rein in their emotions and not let them rule them, but use them um, in, in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 25, 28 says, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Wow, if we, if we don't learn self-control in these things, we're, it, it's going to take us out. We're just gonna, not going to live the life that we're called to live. So the first one was every day, remind yourself of who you are. The second one was have a strategy for conflict. Think about sort of rules of battle that you will adhere to in a conflict. And think about these things when you're not angry. Now, the third strategy or the third exercise I want you to think about, and it kind of summarizes it all, wraps it all up about how we can have emotional margin, emotional capacity. And this is something we need to be doing as Christians. And that is an ever increasing submission to the Holy Spirit, ever increasing submission to the Holy Spirit. If, if I want to increase my emotional capacity, I need to submit to him. I need to let him guide me, let him correct me, let him uh, heal my wounds, all those things. Proverbs 3 verse 5, I'm sure you know it, some of you know it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. We need to increase our trust of the Holy Spirit. Trust him to show us, trust him to correct us and guide us. 
Do you know that in God, we have access to more grace, more love, more mercy than we could ever even need. As Pastor Jack says, we can love above our pay grade. That means we can love when we're in conflict. We can love when, when we're stressed or when we're tense. We can fight these things with a godliness that not in our own humanness. And we get that help from him in times of trouble. Our emotional margin actually has to come from him. We can't actually drum it up ourselves, but we have to let the Holy Spirit work in us. Okay, here's a great scripture to memorize. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. How cool is that? We don't have to figure this out ourselves, church. We can get our strength from the Lord and strong in him. And he is strong. So I'm just going to round this up now, but I wonder if you'd answer a question just to yourself. How are you feeling right now? How, do you feel like you have emotional margin in your life? If, if you are suddenly hit with a, a conflict as soon as you hit off on Facebook or YouTube right in, in a few minutes, would you feel like you could face it well, face it with the Holy Spirit's help? Or what happens if tomorrow you're going about your day and some, something comes your way? How do you feel about your emotional, emotional margin right now? I'd really like to pray now for those that maybe, if they're honest with themselves, know that they're at their stretching point. They know that they're elastic is, is going to snap at any little pressure. And, and I want to pray that God's going to heal any wounds and show you where you can really build up that margin with his help. Or maybe you're someone that feels like you've been in a conflict for a long time. Maybe it's just been an ongoing conflict with someone in your world. And maybe you feel totally out of emotional margin. You don't even know where to go anymore. Well, I really want to pray for you as well that you're going to get your breakthrough right now as we pray, that God's going to give you a strategy. He's going to help you to forgive those that have hurt you. And he's going to show you a way forward in him. So even though we're online, we keep saying it, but it's so true. We've had testimony after testimony, how people have, have uh, had prayer answered even through the internet. So right now, if just find your quiet space, maybe close your eyes, bow your head, and I'm going to do the same. And I'm just going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you want us to live emotionally healthy. You want us to have that capacity to face the battle that we are in day after day. Lord, I thank you that you are our king and that in you we have every resource we need to live well. Lord, I pray for those that are feeling emotionally drained right now. I pray for those that feel like they're just worn out that any little press of their button and, and they feel like they could snap. Lord, I pray for those that have been in conflicts that have lasted a long time, maybe in family relationships, maybe with parents, maybe with children, grown up children. Lord, I ask that you would minister to those right now, that you would comfort them in the grief that they're feeling, that you would refresh them um, and fill them up with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you would show them if there's unforgiveness in their life and that they would be able to deal with that quickly and bring it to your cross. Give them the strength, Lord, to forgive those that have hurt them. And Lord, I ask that you would remind them and remind me who we are in you. Remind us, Lord, that we are your children and we have available every resource at our disposal and that you, Holy Spirit, want to strengthen us and encourage us. Lord, I break the spirit of despair right now. I break the spirit of depression right now. And I pray that your life-giving spirit would fill each of us right now. Thank you, Lord, that we can live with emotional margin, emotional capacity to face anything that the enemy would send our way. And thank you that we can have the victory in this. And Lord, I, I pray that this word will just go deep into our hearts in, in the coming days. And we thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
week service we've had tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday online for Church at Home. Why don't you think about who you can invite this Sunday? Have a great week.